Good afternoon, and we're so glad to see everybody that is here today. Um, I just want to introduce myself. Some of you already know who I am, but I'm Deb Schroeder Divine, and I am the pastor at the Thornton United Methodist Church along with the Clemmie and Goodell churches, and I'll let Shannon introduce herself. Hi everybody, my name is Shannon Chapman and I am the pastor at the Sheffield and West Fork United Methodist Church. Thank you very much for joining us as we celebrate Darla's life today. So we will begin listening to one of her favorite songs. In the misty moon by the flickering firelight, any place is alright, long as I'm with you. In a far away land, on the tropic seas, if your hands in my hand. Because those words are words that I could hear Darla saying because she loved her family and she loved her friends and she just loved anybody who came to see her today it is a great loss because we do miss a good friend and it is a sad occasion but we have gathered today to remember her and to honor her memory it is Darla's death that has brought us together but her life that we wish to remember we are drawn here by our common love, our common respect, and our common grief. And this is certainly an occasion of sorrow, but may it also be an occasion for thanksgiving, because we are thankful for the gift of life, and we are thankful that Darla lived among us. And when we place our trust in Jesus Christ, we are reassured with his words of grace. When Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life, those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Because I live, you shall live also. Those words of God are not meant to diminish or erase the grief and sorrow each of you may feel at the passing of your loved one. They are meant to give a hope that has been made a way we can one day be united again. As we listen to these words of comfort from the familiar passage of scripture, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This psalm assures us that God is there for us to guide and lead us through times of trouble and hardship. He is a friend that stays close to us, providing for us, loving us. And even when we face those troubling days with hurts that are all too painful and real, he promises that he is there for us. And all we need to do is run to him for refuge and strength. We're now going to listen to Amazing Grace, and we invite you to sing along if you know the words. bow our heads in prayer. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our loved one Darla, not only to mourn over how different our lives will be without her, but to give thanks to you for how full life was when she was with us. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate of eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunite, reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Scripture reading from Psalm 139, 1 through 18. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You, you know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed and shoal, you are there. If I take the wings on the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. For darkness is, a, is as a light to you. For it is with you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, 
intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me you are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end, and I am still with you. Today's Words of Hopes comes from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And we're going to do this a little bit different than maybe you have heard before. We're going to read like a verse or two verses, and then we're going to have a response about Darla's life. And um, we know that Shannon and I, when we were sitting with Norma, um, we just had such a wonderful day that day, being able to just reminisce and to remember her in such a beautiful way. And then um, in there is a dash of some of the classmates that had sent um, back some stuff and was um, telling me a couple of little stories. And I said to one of them, do you really want me to put that? Yep, he says I want that in there. So anyway, um, we hope that um, as we go through these words of hope, that you will remember Darla as we did. We start with verse 1. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. Darla Leanne Peters Camrad was born on November 6, 1958 in Blue Earth, Minnesota to Larry and Norma Peters. She would go to school in Sway City and a country school in Minnesota and she graduated from Sheffield Chapin High School in 1977. She would go on to earn her degree from the Hamilton Business College. Darla would plant into others what it meant to be kind. To treat others with love and kindness, the first words that you would hear about Darla was how she had such a sweet smile and that she was so pleasant to other people. And she was. She instilled this into her family as well. She and Doug raised their children to instill that kindness to others, and her love will live on throughout her family, who she built up in the love that she showed to her boys, their wives, along with their grandchildren, Jeremy and Danny Camrad, and children Sydney and Tyree, Derek and Annette Camrad, and children Cortland, Kaylee, Tajan, Courtney Camrad, with their son Askel, and the new great grandbaby that she never got to meet. In verse 3 we read, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. Throughout Darla's life there would be times of breakdown, times of healing and times of building up, and it is through the love of her life, Doug, that her life would be built up. She met Doug in high school and it was a box social event that would really have been their first date. It was interesting to listen to this story as we heard about the fact that the sandwich that Darla made was not even anything that Doug wanted to eat. He just wanted to buy it from Darla. He did that and they shared their lunch together and that was the beginning of a beautiful and lasting friendship and marriage. For they were a couple their senior year of high school being married October 7th, 1978 and their lives would be blessed with two boys, Jeremy and Derek. Together they would face the diagnosis that Darla received in 1986 that she had MS. This would be the time that her family would need to draw on their strength together and help Darla face this illness with her strong faith in God and her stubborn determination and desire to not let it get the best of her. Verse 4, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. I'd like to share a story here, and I don't know if you would clarify it as one of a time to laugh, a time to mourn, or a time to weep. I'm sorry, I just swallowed a wasp. <laughs> I'm fine. I just wasn't expecting that. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> no, it was not death. <laughs> it went into, <laughs> anyway. Oh, goodness. 
the things that happen in the midst of services and in the midst of life. And this is one of those things that I'm not sure if you wanted to laugh about it or if you wanted to cry about it. But the day that I happened, I suppose there was probably a lot of weeping, but Dan Myers, who was also a good friend of Darla, <laughs> um, him and Darla did many things together. And he says, Deb, he says, you know, it was the day before graduation, and Darla and I had been somewhere doing something. And we get back to Darla's house, and here's my dad and Larry. Larry decided he was going to put a new window in the house. He said they didn't cover a thing up, and they had this great big saw, and there's a great big hole in the wall. And he said, dust everywhere. You couldn't see anything because of the dust. And he said, so Darla says, you can't leave these two alone by themselves ever. And one of them said, well, Dan, aren't you going to stay and help us? And he goes, no, I think I'm kind of busy today. <laughs> and he proceeded to walk off. I said, well, Dan, did you guys ever finish that window? And he goes, I don't know if they did or if they didn't that day. He said, I have no clue. I didn't want to be anywhere near it. <laughs> that was one of the things. So I think now we can laugh about it. But at the time, Larry, I bet the normal wanted to cry. <laughs> so as boys will be boys, Darla would have her share of laughter, I'm sure, with her two boys. But I'm sure with Doug also that there would be much laughter. The boys may not remember so much, but Norma won't ever forget the matching outfits that Darla would put on the boys and so that they matched together. Um, the family remembers the many fishing trips they went on and the time that she caught a stingray out of the gravel pits. She loved to fish. She loved to go down to Texas to be with her family in the winter and do more fishing. But it was while Norma was on vacation one time, and she gets a phone call from Darla, and um, she's like, well, what's up? And Darla says, well, I want to know how to clean fish. <laughs> so, so anyway, <laughs> the family will remember. They love those kind of stories. But with love, though, comes loss. And the family, again, had to face a devastating loss when their beloved husband, and Dad Doug died on June 21st, 1998. This would be a time of mourning and weeping and having again to rely on the strength of their faith in God. I also know that it is a pain and grief that never fully goes away, and Darla would continue to miss Doug throughout the years. What would get her through was leaning on her family, her friends, that she could laugh with and cry with, and even in her own way, dance with. For God doesn't promise that life is always easy, but what he does promise is that he is there to help us along the way. Verse 5, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Darla would embrace life in everything she did. She loved animals and especially loved her Pomeranian dogs. But before the MS, she also loved to show horses and take care of them. She even had a horse that she would sit, would sit, and the horse would lay there beside her with his head in her lap. Yes, she had a way about attracting all of God's creatures to enjoy the beauty and the earth of other living creatures. Verse 6, a time to seek and a time to lose a time to keep, and a time to throw away. One of their most special moments that the family shared was her old big pan of goulash, and I guess she made more goulash than anybody knew what to do with. And she'd make it at the beginning of the week, and they'd have goulash for two nights. On the third night, they'd have what they called their vegetable dish, where she would put a whole bunch of veggies in it, and, and so now it was a hot vegetable dish. And by the end of the week, it was just called leftovers. <laughs> and it would last all week long. Although that this was leftovers, the one thing I do know that did not stick around long was her fried chicken and her chocolate chip cookies. They said that she loved to make them and everyone loved to eat them because they were the best. It was nothing to be invited to a meal at Darla's and have a taste of her home cooking. She enjoyed sharing with her families and friends. Verse 7, a time to tear and a time to sew, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. 
One of the things many of us will remember about Darla from our high school days, okay, I'm just gonna, I didn't go to high school with her, <laughs> but from your high school days, I should have rephrased that, was her beautiful hair and her wonderful personality to match. Now we got another story from Kirsty Beck Kirkus, who remembers their very special friendship that her and Darla had. They went um, on, she went on to share that Darla had, and her had some business classes in high school and they became, became great friends. After high school, they ended up going to Hamilton Business College together, Darla doing secretarial classes and Kirsty doing accounting classes. And they would trade off driving back and forth because their schedules were pretty close. One particular winter morning, Kirsty remembers that her and Darla were headed off to class and as they neared the Rockwell corner, they hit an icy patch and did a 360 degree twirl and ended up, ended up in the ditch, which was level full of snow. Now, of course, back then they didn't have cell phones to call anybody and get some help. So they hiked to the restaurant on the corner to use their cell phone to call Levitz to pull them out. Luckily, there was no damage to the car and they both managed to get to school a bit late and a bit shaken but, we missed our first, but they missed their first class. And actually, they could say they skipped a college class one day, probably the only day they skipped. Darla was a woman who, even as we had, had drifted, drifted apart from her high school friends and went their separate ways, the one thing that most of her high school friends know that when they did meet up with Darla, it was just like starting where they left off. She would give you that great, big, wonderful smile, tell you how glad she was to see you. Then she would want to give you that kiss to let you know that she truly enjoyed that you came to see her. Her smile would light up the room. What a great way to greet others. For the relationships that she built throughout the years were never torn, nor did they need us sewed back up. They just needed to be renewed in the presence of each other. Verse 8. <clears throat> a time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. One of the things that Darla's family and friends will always remember about Darla, that is, when you came to visit her, she always wanted a hug. She always wanted to give you a kiss also. She would kiss your hand and then she would give you a kiss and, and when you came to see her, whether you were coming or whether you were leaving, she always wanted that hug. She loved people and she would let them know that. Don't ever forget to tell anyone that you love them would be the words that if Darla was standing here today that she would say to other people. I only had a very small opportunity to get to know Darla as just starting out. Um, the smile is the one thing that I will always remember. Um, I would go into her room and there was always this presence about her because she loved the visits, she loved people. And we didn't have huge conversations and we didn't get to talk about a ton of things, but she always made me feel like there was joy. No matter what was said, no matter what we did, there was always joy. Her whole presence, her whole being was that of joy, even visiting in the care center. And today we'd like to leave you with a couple things. I'd like to leave you that God promises to go with us, encouraging us through loved ones and friends, and by sending the Holy Spirit to minister to us and provide us with strength, comfort, and hope day after day. God's grace gives us a sure footing for the living out of our days, regardless of what happens. And surrounded by Christ's love, we can look forward to the future, no matter what tomorrow brings. God's love will be there to lean on, to rest in, and to build on. Psalm 100 is one of those psalms that reminds me of Darla. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. 
Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all nation, generations. I'd like to ask you to bow your head in prayer. <coughs> Gracious God, we thank you for your servant Darla, for the gift of her life, for the grace you have given her, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful. We thank you that for her death is past and pain is ended, and she has entered the joy you have prepared. We thank you that by dying, Christ has conquered death, and that by rising again, he promises eternal life. Help us to know that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love. In Christ our Lord, and as we the people pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is How Great Thou Art, and if you know the words, we would invite you to sing with us. Then 
sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Before we um, finish up the service today, Norma would like to say a few words. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep within your hearts and minds the knowledge and love of God and the blessings of the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. And let us, before we dismiss, um, have a blessing of the food so that when you start to go through the line, we don't have to stop and do that again. So let us bow our heads. Gracious and holy God, as we come to you today, we, get, we have gathered as family and friends of Darla. We know that people have been traveling and um, came from distances. And so we know that you have taken her to heaven. She is with her beloved Doug, that she is with other family members. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we were able to share together. Be with all of us as we leave. And let the food that we are about to eat nourish our bodies in ways that we can't even imagine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we'd like to end with this special music that was another one of Darla's favorites. Looking back We share beneath the stars above for a moment all the world was right. How could I have known that you'd ever say goodbye? And that I'm glad I didn't know the way it all would end. I could have missed the pain, but I'd have had to miss the pain. Holding you, I held everything for a moment. Wasn't I? If I'd only know how the king would fall, and who was to say, you know I might have changed it all. Stop.
plains But I'd have had to miss the sun